In this video, I want to derive the posterior predictive distribution for the case of when we've got a normal prior density and we've got a normal likelihood function here. So the case here is pretty similar to that of the prior predicted distribution, although what we're trying to obtain here is the probability of our sort of new observation, which I'm going to call here x primed, given that we've observed a vector of observations, which I'm calling x here. So x primed here might be the test score of an individual in a new class, and x bar here, sort of x under bar here, representing a vector of observations, which is the sort of test scores of all individuals in our current class. And we note that this is basically just a marginal distribution, whereby we've integrated out all theta dependence. Although it's a little bit more complicated because we've got this conditioning on sort of x, our sort of vector of observations. But that doesn't really change things that much. All we have to do is we have to integrate theta from minus infinity to plus infinity of the joint density of x primed and theta, given that we have observed our vector of observations x integrated over choice of theta. So all I've done to get this is I'm just sort of integrating out choice of theta, which is going to give me this marginal density here on the left. And we know that we can decompose this into two individual probabilities using the sort of law of conditional probability, which says that this is equivalent to the probability of x primed given theta and given our sort of vector of observations, call it sort of x sort of underscore, times our probability of theta given our sort of vector of observations x integrated over choice of theta. Then what we do is we note that this first term here is essentially the likelihood. And what we have said is, or part of our model, is that if we know theta, then observations are conditionally independent. So that means that I can actually just remove this conditioning on our vector of observations, because theta tells me all there is that sort of connects x primed with our vector of observations. And what is this sort of second part here? This is the probability of theta given that we've observed x sort of bar, our, our sort of vector of observations, and this here is just simply our posterior density. And we know in this case that the likelihood is itself normal, and we also know the form of the posterior density. The posterior density is normal with a sort of mean of, call it theta primed, and a variance of sigma squared primed of theta. So what we could do is, of course, we could just do this integral, and that would give us straight away our posterior predictive distribution. And we should sort of guess that if we're sort of multiplying two normals together, that we should expect to get something which is normal out in the end. And that's exactly what we get. But again, we're going to use this sort of cheat which we used before, which is to write x primed as being equal to x primed minus theta plus theta. And trivially, this is true because the thetas just cancel out. And again, we know that x primed minus theta is going to be normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared x because the sort of theta has removed the fact that x primed is itself normally distributed with a mean of theta. And we don't have to worry about sigma squared theta here because we're assuming basically that we know theta because we're taking it away from the left hand side. So we're just left with the sort of imprecision in x, which is just sigma squared x. Then if we just think about theta, we know that theta here is itself, this is just the posterior density, so it's just normally distributed with a mean of theta primed and a variance of sigma squared theta all primed. And these two random variables, respectively x prime minus theta and theta, are themselves just straightforward normal distributions, and they're just independent. Hence, we know, because of the fact that the sum of two normal distributions is itself normal, so we've got the normal here, of a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared x plus the normal distribution of a mean of theta primed and a variance of sigma squared theta primed. We know that the sum of these two independent normal distributions you can prove is itself a normal distribution. So in this case x primed here is itself normally distributed with a mean which is the sum of the two means zero plus theta primed so it's just theta primed and a variance which is the sum of the two variances, so sigma squared x plus sigma squared theta all prime. So the posterior predictive density, which is just this sort of density which is written down here, is itself 
normally distributed, which is exactly what we would have obtained by doing this integral. And the posterior predicted distribution here is full of intuition. Remember that theta is essentially the mean test score which we sort of expect. So it comes as no surprise that the sort of mean value of x primed that we sort of should expect is itself theta primed. And it should also come as no surprise that the variance is the sum of the sort of datum variance sigma squared x plus the variance of our sort of distribution, which we sort of had our posterior predicted distribution, which is sigma squared theta primed. In other words, our sort of imprecision in terms of the value of theta, which we obtained after our first sort of experiment of observations. And just to be clear here, sigma squared x is the variant of our sort of new data point, x primed, and I'm just sort of assuming here that it's the same as the variants of the original data points.